Hello awesomeness junkies, welcome to your favorite YouTube channel Hustle is for Life Motivation where we follow the stories of extraordinary people who have created amazing results in their life and I try to expose you to their paradigms, their past, their present and where they're going in the future just to show you what's really truly possible for you. You might be able to relate to this story and say, hey, I'm kind of stuck in my life. I don't know where to go, okay? I don't know what to do. But there are other people who have gone through a similar situation. You're not the only one in that boat, even though it feels like you might be the only one in that boat. So I try and expose you to the mindsets of amazing people so you can actually develop your own mindset, follow in their footsteps and achieve the same level of stratospheric success that they have managed to create for themselves. And today I have an amazing lady with me. She is a, actually a, a Swedish entrepreneur. Um, she's a Swedish certified photo organizer and personal historian. And she specializes in digital organizing of files and photos. She's the owner of the Swedish Swedish Organizer LLC, a company that is actually providing customized family history solutions to clients all over the world. She's got webinars, she's got courses, she's got um, lots of workshops that she does, she's got coaching clients. She is the true definition of a modern uh, entrepreneur who's got multiple streams of income. Now, Apart from that, she's got a bachelor's degree in visual communications from Hawaii Pacific University and a master's degree in media management from Columbia College, Chicago. She is a member of National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals and currently serves as the director of technology and communications for the Chicago chapter. She's also the member of National Genealogical Society, the Association of Personal Photo Organizers, the Association of Personal Genealogists, and all of their respective Chicago chapters. She is also a member of the Association of Personal Historians and she's got two amazing blogs. One is called about organizing photos and the other one is called Searching Scandinavia. Both links will be below in the description. So go and check them out. But please put your hands together and help me welcome Caroline Gunter to Hustle is for Life Motivation. Caroline, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. That was, uh, you needed to take a breath there <laughs> for a minute in between. That, that's a long bio I sent you. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling a little hot, you know, to be honest with you. Under the call, I'm getting a little bit hot because I, I just, I just, I had my notes here. I was reading off the notes. I was trying to bring energy and, uh, you know, trying, trying to make it all together, you know, put it all together. And, uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little hot now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. No, it's a pleasure. We actually got connected to um, a mutual friend who actually probably doesn't know about this uh, it's Dory Clark and uh, for those people who are watching this and uh, view the channel regularly Dory is somebody I interviewed earlier the links below in the description she is phenomenal and we actually got connected to Dory um, and uh, I, I reached out to Caroline asked her to be on the channel she very kindly accepted so here we are on this call Caroline this is awesome I mean <laughs> Not Thanks. only you're doing all these things, but actually next week you are going to be at the Infopreneur Summit that's hosted by Bailey Richard, who yep. I also interviewed, by the way, and the interview went live, uh, you know, uh, uh, earlier. So you can go and check that out. Link is below in the description. So can you tell another, us that? another amazing infopreneur? Oh yeah, yeah, she's she's amazing. I think that was probably one of my favorite interviews that I've done on the channel. She was so awesome. Um, but yeah, Caroline, can you can you tell us about how you got started? I mean, this all this stuff Absolutely. sounds amazing, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about your story, your background, and uh, how how all of this came into being? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, it's It's been a long journey, actually, to find who I want to be and, and who I am. Um, as you mentioned, um, I was born and raised in Sweden, um, still hold citizenship there, I go there all the time. I spend my time um, there, I spend my time here in the U.S., and I've always been somebody who loves adventure, who loves to explore. Um, I've always felt like you need to go, and if you haven't been there, you should go, basically. That's that's my mindset. If you haven't met that, that person, you should meet that person. That's always been my, my thing, and so um, after I graduated high school, I wanted to go someplace else. And so I spun a globe and did this and put my finger. And fortunately for me, it landed on Hawaii. I mean, can oh, you nice. imagine 
better place, like better luck than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. So off I went to Hawaii. I did my bachelor's there. Uh, then I came to Chicago to do my master's. Uh, always been interested in uh, media, communication, uh, technology, that part of the thing, uh, part of the, um, you know, the, the development. But um, never really found my niche. Never, you know, I bounced around between a lot of techie things. I bounced around from photography and, and web design and communications and video production and all those things that have now led me to what I really like to do, which is digital technology education and um, helping people preserve their f uh, photos, their files, um, creating their legacies, uh, and just being productive. And it's it's been a long journey. Um, I started out when I started my company also doing general organizing, you know, closets, basements, that kind of thing. Uh, found very quickly that I was good at it but it wasn't my passion right. and I've always sort of let my passion lead me and so um, this is where I ended up now I deal with uh, you know global clients I, I have my courses so I, I love to teach uh, and yeah it's it's basically a dream come true I think this I've got my I've got my American dream so I'm happy <laughs> Yes, well, it shows from the big smile that you have on your face, so that's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate that. And the great thing is that you are your your fingers on the pulse, right? You don't let anything pass by. I mean, you are creating programs, you're creating webinars, you have online communities that you're managing, right? And you are also doing a lot of speaking. I mean, this is tremendous, doing so much, but it's. It's also, I think, something we talked about a little bit about earlier, like type A personalities. You just have to run through walls, right? Yep. So yep. let's talk a little bit about that in terms of how do you balance everything? Yeah, that's the hard part. And I think <laughs> in a weird way, I'm, I mean, it's lucky kind of that I'm an organizer because I'm naturally good at productivity and time management and things like that. Yeah. And I think if I wasn't, I'd be in real trouble because I tend to take on a lot. And um, that's just my personality. I love what I do and that passion drives me and it's basically all I think about. And so having that balance um, is real hard, but somehow I'm managing it. And um, as we talked about earlier, you know, I am, you know, trying to delegate more and, and learning to let go a little bit of that control. It's really hard, but I'm, get, I'm getting there. Awesome. <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I have to say that it shows that you are very, very kind of focused, organized, methodical person because in the background, I just see boxes and I just see books <laughs> piled up neatly and the, yeah. the boxes have perfect symmetry. I mean, it's, this is phenomenal. I mean, compared to some of the, you know, other places that I've gone to uh, and, and visited people's homes or, you know, sometimes you have a guest on and, and they have, you know, they, they're kind of moving around their house and setting everything up. Um, so I, I've seen I've seen some some pretty special special sites, but this one is very pleasing because it's very organized. So it shows that you're a very very organized person. Well, I think I think you have to be uh, because when you get to a certain point, mm -hmm. you're forced to spend your time in a very productive way, or you just can't keep up, right? So I think success in a way just forces you to be that much more conscious of how you spend your time. Yeah. And those who know me will say, I mean. I, I track my time diligently. I, I know exactly where I spend my time and how long that takes. I use Toggle. I don't know if you use that, but tracking my time has been like one of the best things I ever did for my business because it shows you exactly the, what you need to know to know if, okay, you know what? I need to let go of this. I need to focus more here or this is a waste of time or this is really paying off like that ROI that you see. Um, that's been really good. And so, yeah, I do, I do like to stay organized because – that just that it helps me you know it's it's uh, it's one of those things and I love to help other people that's mm. why I love what I do because I feel like that's such an important uh, part of your success it's it's how you manage your life and how you manage your business you know you don't want to waste time anywhere yeah yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely uh, did you did you mention something called Tago can, can you please tell Tago. us a little bit about that yeah, what is that yeah, toggle at t o g g l dot com. Um, free time tracking, uh, basically. You can oh, wow. have it on as an app on your phone or on your computer. You clock in and out on what you're what you're um, working on, and you can do reports and summaries. Um, so I use it for myself, for my clients, for my subcontractors, and uh, 
There's other ones out there that are great, but um, I just like this one. Everybody finds it really easy to use, and I just I can't recommend it highly enough because that's just one of those things where you need to know where your time goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Awesome. No, I love that, and and that's perfect. Thank you for sharing that. I'll put again put the link below in the description so people can go and yeah. check that out. Um, and anybody who's watching this, if any of this is resonating with you, where you find it hard to manage your time, you find it hard to stay organized. And you're too busy just putting out the fires. I mean, you could be just a stay-at-home mom. And you're just constantly putting out fires. You don't have the time to just sit down, collect your thoughts, and plan, and organize, and schedule. And you seem like, you seem to be doing lots of things, but you're not really getting anywhere. Or you might be an entrepreneur who's just starting up. Or you might be a manager who's managing lots of people. And you find that it's really hard to stay on top of things because there's just too many fires to put out all the time, then I'm sure there's really strong uh, messages that, that Caroline is going to share with us on these things. So far, it, it, it's, it's great to hear that there is a way to do something about it, right? And, and Caroline just shared a resource with us. So Caroline, can you dig a little bit deeper and give us some advice for people who do struggle with those things? Yeah, so the first thing I want to say is that if you're really putting out fires like all the time and you really feel like there's no way out, there is help out there. Um, I belong to some great organizations. I meant, You mentioned in my bio the National Association of Organizing Productivity Professionals. There is a person in your area who can help you with this. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where – People sometimes say, oh, well, it takes too much time to plan, but they don't realize if you plan everything up front, it saves you so much time later on because you're not fumbling and you know exactly what your goal is, how to get there and how to get it accomplished. And I think that's one of the strongest skills I have is is figuring out what goal do I really want to accomplish and how do I get there and backtracking that to figure out what are the steps I need to get there and, and how do I accomplish this and, and do I need to bring in somebody to help me with this or, mm. or what do I need to do to get there? I mean, really just visualizing all those stepping stones and then that's how you get there. I mean, if you don't have a goal, you don't know when you're there, right? Yeah. You don't know how to, how to measure that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's- absolutely. So, Caroline, who, who tend to be your typical clients? Um. I, there's a mix of, mix of people, uh, but I actually tend to get a lot of clients who, uh, struggle with time themselves and they know they want to get, uh, their digital life organized, um, but they just, they, they don't have that as a focus. So they basically outsource that to me and they say, you know what, set me up with a great system, uh, teach me how to manage the system going forward, uh, and I'll take it from there. But I just need help getting started. Right. And there are situations where I, I set it up for people and then they take it over, mm. or I do a, an ongoing coaching, you know, like um, a chat once, once a week or once a month just to help people stay on track. Uh, but usually it's people who, who just um, – they have other focus. I mean, that's another thing where if you tend to focus on too many things, nothing gets done, right? Yeah, so a yeah. lot of them have different focus. Uh, but they know this is something that needs to get done, but they just they can't make that their main focus, and so they come to me for that. Um, and sometimes little steps is all it takes to get going. You know, I always tell my clients, let's make your first goal so ridiculously easy mm-hmm. that you cannot not do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. once they get started, it's usually the getting over that hump and getting started. That's that's when it all sort of unfolds. Awesome, awesome. And yeah. you're you're so right. Like in terms of you know getting a client and, and to help them gain clarity on how they can stay organized, how can they be more productive and focused? You have to get them started small, right? So they gain yeah. momentum, and and then obviously they yeah. can they can run with it. But to start off, they, you have to get them started small, and that's that's great. Yeah. I I absolutely love that. So, Caroline, how did you gain all those skills? How did you develop all those skills about being productive, about being focused, about being goal oriented, and figuring out what your goal is and how to backtrack it? All those things. So I actually, I I mean, I've always been a very organized person, but I've also learned how to be organized. And I really believe that organizing is a skill that you can learn. Right. Um, 
I some people say, oh, I'm just born with it. And yes, maybe there are, you know, you have those tendencies. But I really feel that anybody can learn how to stay organized because it's just this. Uh, it's basically coping skills, right? Yeah. How do you respond to things that happen in your life? Mm. And so uh, once you learn those coping skills, you understand better how to cope with the next one that mm. comes in. And, and you kind of learn how to put out fires in a way that it doesn't affect you negatively. So it's really about uh, picking up the right responses to situations, I guess you could put it that way. Um, and so I really believe everybody can can learn to get um, get organized. Um, some, they just might need a little bit of help along the way. Uh, I was the kind of person, I actually have a funny story about that. You know those My Little Ponies I used yeah, to collect yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. a little girl? Um, if you turn mine over, they had a number on their hoof, and <laughs> I had a huge inventory, and I actually... Um, that was my first entrepreneurial thing. I actually rented them out to my friends. Oh, wow. <laughs> I That's... had an inventory, and I, I, was, uh, I was a very good, um, successful entrepreneur when oh I was uh, five years old. <laughs> How old <laughs> were you at that stage? Five. five. That's <laughs> insane. I love it. Awesome. So at that point, I knew, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. This is, this is who I am. You know, but I just didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah, so. yeah. Wow. Well, you, you started <laughs> off early. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You started off already. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the story, by the way. That's amazing. You you actually like labeled your My Little Ponies and rented Absolutely. them out. That, yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. So, Caroline, what are the common, say, mistakes that people make that you come across when they are trying to be organized, when they are trying to, you know, be more focused? Yeah. Or, or maybe even the limiting beliefs that they have. Yeah. So again, I think it comes all all comes back to that whole um, goal setting. And usually, what I find when I talk to people is that they set goals, but they're too big. Right. So you know, uh, New Year's resolution, classic example. You know, I'm gonna do this this year, and they just set this major goal that's gonna be done by the end of the year. Yeah. But yet, there are no small steps to get them there. Mm. And that's the big thing because you start to feel so overwhelmed, like, oh my God, this is such a huge mountain to climb. I'm never going to get there. And I might as well just give up. And then yeah. that doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel like a real failure. It makes you feel awful. And so um, I actually talked about uh, this exact thing with a client the other day. And uh, she was going to get her photo organizing going. And I said, you know what? The first thing I want you to do is just open the, the box. Yeah. That's all you have to do today. Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? That's it? I said, yeah, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Because I know you're having trouble getting started. And we're just going to take one small step that you can do today. Tomorrow, you'll take a couple of pictures out and look at them and mm -hmm. decide which one you want to keep. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. we made it so small that she was like, oh, I mean, I can do that. Yeah. But guess what happened? When she actually started, she actually started pulling stuff out and going through it. Right. Awesome. And the whole point is that once you took the, the lid off the box, it wasn't that hard anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it's like me. I absolutely hate exercise. Um, and the hardest part for me about going to the gym is actually getting dressed and putting mm. my gym my sneakers on. Once I do that, I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? I might as well go because <laughs> I'm already dressed for it. Yeah. But if I don't put my sneakers on, it's it's over. And so that's that's that little that little piece that you need is that little step. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, usually that's what I what I see is that the goal is there, but it's too big of a goal. You're not got to break it down. You got to break, break it down. It down. Tiny, tiny, tiny spot. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's phenomenal. I, I have to ask you, though, have you read the one thing? I have not. You have not. Right. OK, no. because everything you're I've talking about. Oh, you've heard of it. Okay. So <laughs> everything you're talking about there, it looks like, you know, you and, and Gary Keller have actually somehow collaborated to write that book because literally <laughs> it's, 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 it's literally letter to letter. It's the same thing. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, if you, if, if you do get a chance, you know, uh, guys, when you're watching this, if you do get a chance, check out the book. It's called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. Uh, amazing book on productivity. 
And when they did a survey of the 100 top books you need to read to become a billionaire, this book had its own category. And everything that Caroline's talking to us about, um, it, it's mentioned in that book. So uh, I, I just I just thought of it simply because Caroline, you know, everything that she's talked about before, it was just like, yep, tick, check, yep, it's there. So <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to... Up right away. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a really powerful book. So uh, please go check that out if you haven't already. And and Caroline, that was that was phenomenal. Thank you for sharing that. It, it looks like you have a very clear system in place mm-hmm. to help the clients get clarity and and help mm-hmm. them where they're struggling. And that's awesome. I love that. So let's talk about obviously all the other stuff that you're doing as well. At the moment, you have multiple businesses. You have online communities, you have blogs, you have speaking engagements, you have coaching engagements. So in all of that, what do you think is the the one thing that helps you stay focused? One practice, one routine that you have that really helps you stay focused and perform at the highest level? I'm going to say it's not a practice, it's a mindset and it's it's passion. Right. That's awesome. absolutely the one answer I have because, um, like I said before, I tried and bounce, bouncing around from between other things. I was always kind of good at it, but it was never that one thing where I went like, okay, this is who I am. This is what I am meant to be. This is where I can shine. And I think with any business, if you don't have passion for it, it's just going to fizzle because you're just not in it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm. if I didn't get paid for what I do, I'd probably be doing the exact same thing. And I think that's the test. If you if you can pass that test, then you're on the right track. And so I want to say to you know everybody who's listening there that if you find your passion, if you have your passion, you will be successful mm-hmm. because it'll come naturally with it. Um, if you don't have the passion, then uh, find what the passion is because that's that's really the key to it. I think uh, when you know that this is what you're meant to be doing, um, I mean you can't go wrong. Yeah, you know, yeah. can't go wrong with it. Yeah, absolutely. So is is there something that you can maybe talk us through uh, or, or advise us on, on how, for example, somebody can go and find their passion or, or maybe talk about how did you manage to find your passion? Right. I mean, it can be anything. I mean, in this digital age, I mean, I have uh, friends and colleagues who have found their passion in the most uh, weird of niches. Uh, I mean, so it can be anything. Uh, It doesn't have to be a a traditional business. Um, You know, like when I was growing up, you know, you, you became a lawyer or a doctor and that was it. Uh, And it was a, you know, a straight track. But, um, I, I never wanted to be that. I wanted to create my own, um, business and what I've done really is create my own um, my own profession in a in a weird way. I mean, I'm not going to say that I came up with photo organizing. Absolutely not. We have a wonderful association and mm. it has progressed that way or anything. But what I've done is I've figured out a way to make that my business. If that makes any sense. Um, it's not a tr- you know people ask me what I do and I go oh I organize digital files and they go really like that's a thing so yeah any anything can be a thing if you're just yeah. passionate to to believe in it and go there um, I actually have a, a friend who um, teaches courses online about gardening um, right. and it's, it's okay. not just any gardening it's specific mm-hmm. art it's about growing strawberries and you'd think that that's such a small niche that who is gonna Who's gonna? But apparently, there's a lot of strawberry fans out there, and she's doing great, and that's her passion. Wow. Um, strawberries. Who knew? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so it can be anything that you're good at, and it doesn't have to be like a traditional, traditional business that that you have, you know, from behind, from before. It doesn't. Yeah. Ha- it can be anything. Yeah, but, and, and this is, you know, guys, if you're watching this, this is coming from somebody who chose that path. So this is not something that, you know, somebody has read about and they're coming on and they're talking about it. This is somebody who's chosen that path, gone down that route and found success, right? So Caroline is, you know, the the profession she is in, the, the, the business that she is in is not technically, you know, a, a traditional business model or a traditional business uh, kind of like structure that you would think of, but she's found success in it. So it's truly possible for you. 
Caroline, I'm putting myself in the shoes of somebody who's watching this, who's obviously inspired by everything that you have talked about. And maybe they have a passion like that where they want to go ahead and start a business and, and be doing the stuff that they really, really care about. But yeah. they're scared. They are not sure how they're going to actually get the clients. They're not sure how they're going to get the clients to pay them the money. They're not even sure where to find the clients. So how did you get started in all that? Right. So that is the, that's the hard thing. And um, I'm going to say, if, if you want to be something, just be it. Because then at that point, if you are it, you are it. That's it. Yeah. Um, success will follow. Just if you want to be something, just be it. That's always how I've, how I've seen it. And um, I think if you have a strong support network around you, um, that really helps. It does take time to build a business. I'm not going to sit here and say it's an overnight success because it's not. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of um, passion. It takes a lot of uh, content creation. It takes, you know, it takes uh, marketing. It takes all of those things. Yeah. Um, so you really just have, that's why you have to have that heart and that passion to be in it uh, for the long haul. You're in it, you know, um, not just for a day or two. You're in it for, for a long time. Yeah. Um, but I think having a support network, um, uh, connecting with people, I tell everybody what I do, basically. Mm. Um, connecting with you, for example, connecting and taking, seizing all those opportunities that come and not being scared of, of saying yes to something. Yeah. Um, you know, I, sometimes you're like, oh, could I really do that? Just say yes and then see what happens. And every time I've said yes to something like that, something nice has actually come out of it. And mm. I made a new friend. Worst case scenario, it goes horribly, but you make a new friend. And those, even if it, you might look back and say, oh, um, I f feel like I failed. You didn't. You just figured out that that's maybe not what you're supposed to be doing. Or maybe that's leading you in another direction. Or maybe you meet somebody else from that. So it takes a, a while to build it up. But eventually you get there if you just don't give up. So um, I think just keeping at it, but realizing that it is going to take time. And so the more you can uh, talk to people, the more you can network, the more you can um, put that passion into it, um, the better you'll do. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love that response. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, you started by saying something that I, 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 it just kind of hit me and I found it to be really powerful. And you said, if you're passionate about something, just be it. Mm hmm. And that's amazing. I love that. Advice. And then you are it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's simple. It's straightforward, but it's so powerful at the same time. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. So at the moment, Caroline, you are managing so many things, um, but you're also doing the Infopreneur Summit. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about how did you become an infopreneur or how did you how did you actually go down that road and decide that this is the thing that will that will actually get you results? Right. So I've been working with clients one on one for a long time, and um, there's only so many hours in the day. And I, the truth of the matter is, I just wanted to help more people. Mm. You know, the the clients I have are lovely. I love them to death, um, but I can only take on so many people and help so many people in one sitting. And so, what I really wanted to do is scale, and I wanted to say, okay, you know what? I can help more people um, by becoming an infopreneur because I can write and I can do courses and I can I can share what I know with more people if I do that. And so that's sort of uh, it all came from that desire to help more people. And um, I love teaching. I love helping in general. And so I really love it. Uh, it's been great so far. And uh, it just it just um, it just sort of reinforces that I have a purpose with my business and I'm doing something good for people. Yeah. And I'm actually helping. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that I think that's the best way to have a bigger impact. Mm hmm. If you want to actually leave a legacy behind, you want to have a bigger impact, you're going to have to kind of step outside your comfort zone and do something different. And, and the online world is phenomenal. It gives you so many more opportunities that, that yeah. you won't have available to you otherwise. Like, for example, with the clients, you might only be able to deal with, say, 15 clients, 20 clients, 50 clients, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But in an online world, well, you're not limited. You're not limited by space. You're not limited mm -hmm. by time. 
right? Mm-hmm. So while mm-hmm. you're sleeping, somebody can still actually benefit from your blog, your course, your mm-hmm. webinar, whatever it is that you've created. And you will also benefit because you will get paid for it while you're sleeping. So there you go. That's uh, that's phenomenal. That's awesome. how it works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. And I, you know what? Just because somebody doesn't live near me, I felt like, well, why shouldn't they... Why shouldn't I get to know them? It all comes from that, I guess, explorer attitude that I have of I want to get to know people. And um, and now I travel digitally, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that's great because if you think about it, you in, in terms of travel or connecting with people, you might only be able to see clients in your local area if you're seeing them face to face. But yeah. with an online sort of medium, you can see anybody in the world. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I love that because I love exploring uh, different cultures and learning about different cultures. I love talking to other people. I love speaking other languages and and just connecting with people all over. And I have clients in uh, obviously in Sweden, which is where I'm from, but here in the U.S. where I live right now, wow. uh, France, Norway, Estonia, Dubai. Wow. Uh, I mean, Australia, it's it's crazy. Brazil, I love that, and it brings so much joy um, meeting people from from those parts of the world, hearing about their lives and what they're doing, and it's just it's it's wonderful. Yeah, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, and you are an international infopreneur. Mm-hmm. And how cool is that? You're connected with so many people from all over the world. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. That's awesome. So, Caroline, I mean, you have achieved so much. And it's absolutely phenomenal. You're obviously very passionate about it. It shows you care about people. You care about what you do. And you have you know, dropped so much value on us so far. I'm just wondering, what what's next for you? What are you focusing on in 2018? I am focusing on visibility. Um, because a lot of the time, uh, people don't realize that help is out there. They don't realize that people like me exist. Um, we have a wonderful association for photo organizing. We have an association for professional organizers, for genealogists. There's there's always help out there for people, and I'm trying to help um, increase sort of market awareness of what I do and what my colleagues do. I'm trying to um, help everybody sort of um, – make more connections, I guess. I'm a connector. I love connecting people. And uh, I love creating communities. And uh, uh, with everything that's going on in the world, I feel like we all need more positivity. And so I'm just, I'm trying to inject more positivity in 2018. (laughs) Fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. I love that vision. I absolutely love that vision. So Caroline, we've we've spoken a little bit, I mean, mentioned a few times in terms of the fact you're you're speaking at the Infopreneur Summit uh, that's organized by Bailey Richard. So what is it that what topic are you actually speaking on at the summit and why why did you sign up why is it important to you so i i'm uh, going to be chairing uh best practices in digital organizing awesome. uh my top five um tips because i feel like uh it's something that everybody can apply to whatever area they want uh it's something everybody can learn from or share with somebody um yeah, I think I, I just wanted to, um, I asked uh, Bailey if, if she'd be interested in a topic like that. She's like, yes, absolutely. That's a topic that we don't talk about a lot. Mm. Um, it's not a topic that's too common in, in summits. Uh, so um, she was happy to let me talk about that. And, and I was excited to share it. And um, I actually have um, a free email course on my site um, that wow. you're happy to share with everybody. Sure. Um 10 day course that they can go through they can learn how to organize anything and they can apply it to any area of their life um and it's just stuff that i like to share because i want everybody to be organized <laughs> <laughs> i love that caroline if you don't mind sending me the link uh i'll yeah. definitely put it in the description and uh, people if you're watching this the, you know caroline's leaving us with a free gift go ahead click on the link and check out that course you know what what, what have you got to lose it'll help you organize your life And like Caroline said, you can apply to any area of your life. So how powerful is that? How crazy would it be for you to be so organized? And you know what? If you're organized, then you can help other people more. You can show up as the best version of yourself. Imagine you go to work and you find one of your work colleagues who's struggling with something like that. Your boss is maybe just pulling their hair out. And you're the one who turns out to be the rock that they can cling on to. And you show them, look, 
this is what I've learned. This is what you can do here. This is what you can apply here. This is how you can manage this. How awesome would that be where you're adding value to other people? And again, if any of this resonates with you, then reach out to Caroline to start a conversation. I always urge you guys to go ahead, take action. Um, Caroline, is absolutely phenomenal. She's doing so many different things. She's really trying to add value. She's really passionate about what she, she does and she has clients all over the world. So what more proof do you need? Uh, if, you're, if you're interested, go ahead, reach out to Caroline. I'm sure she's going to be absolutely tremendous and add a lot of value to you. Now, Caroline, you are, have, it, it just blows my mind. The amount of stuff that you are able to do and, and the stuff you're managing and you're running your communities and your blogs and your speaking commitments and your clients and everything else. I, I'm actually wondering, are the other people in your life the same? Or do you find that you are the rock for them and you are kind of going around and helping them put out their fires? Um, that's a funny question. Um, I, I would probably say if you ask my husband, um, yeah, I think I am the rock, maybe, but I will say he's mine. Um, he uh, has a slightly more laid-back attitude towards things than I do, and right. so I usually find myself uh, giving him a lot of tips and tricks on um, you know, how to not get interrupted, how to um, focus better. But you know what? In all honesty, that's something I'm always trying to do for myself as well. Interruptions happen. Uh, focus goes away. I mean, I mean, we're not we're not machines, right? Mm -hmm. We're all human. Yeah. And so that's something I'm always constantly trying to improve for myself too. And so, um, you know, I always try to do my best to help others around me. And um, I think it comes back to you in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it, it's quite interesting um, as well that sometimes when you are good at something, you're an expert in something. You kind of become the go-to person. Like everybody comes to you as like, "Oh, uh, have you got a minute? Or can you show me yeah. how to do this? Or where do I go if I need this?" And s suddenly, you're not just managing everything else, but you're just bombarded with this like constant stream yeah. of requests. Um, and I was just wondering how, how it's turning out for you, because obviously, if you're somebody who's really organized, and there's other people in your life who who might be aspiring to be at that level, then I just turn around and say, "Caroline, what?" What do I do here now? And you're constantly getting a stream of messages and, and you know, feeds, etc. asking for help. So, yeah, 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 that, that's awesome. It's, 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 it's kind of um, a matter of focus again. And if you say you're going to do something at a certain time, you do it at that time. Mm -hmm. And I make sure I plan out my, my day, I plan out my week. And I set aside time for interruptions, and that really helps. Oh, wow. I set aside 30 minutes a day for catching up on things that just come, just life in general. And having that sort of cushion of, of time helps me stay on track with everything else. Because if what happens is if you book your calendar solid and there's no time for, you know, I guess I, I would call it a cushion, I guess. If there's no cushion for just random things that happen, like yesterday, I'm actually moving right now. Yesterday, my contractor oh, wow. said, oh, uh, we have a problem with, with the floor and we have to go buy a new floor. I'm like, okay, great. That I didn't plan that for today. Um, you know, big, but because I had that cushion of time, I was able to handle that and still stay on track for the week. So, you know, um, it, it's, it's nice to be able to plan your day out in a way that you're not overbooked. Mm. I think that's another important skill to have, learning to manage your calendar so that um, you know what you're gonna be working on. But if there's an interruption that comes in, if life happens, somebody gets sick, somebody ha you know, something happens, um, you're able to still stay on focus with what you're doing because you have that um, cushion of time. So yeah, that's what I do and um, it works so far. So far, so good. Awesome, I love it. And yeah. It's amazing what you talked about there in terms of putting aside a block of time mm -hmm. where you just deal with Life. distractions. Yeah, where you just put out fires, right? That's amazing. That because yep. mo for most people, they prioritize. Yeah, exactly. Prioritize, right? So in terms of priority for them, it's just like, oh, this has happened, right? Okay, I'm gonna go and sort this out now. Mm -hmm. But that can that that thing can wait because if you allocate a slot of time and you just focus on 
the one thing that you need to do in terms of you know moving the needle the one thing that will move the needle the most and you leave everything else you know lower down in your list of priorities once you've done that one thing and you've earned the right to go ahead and deal with other things then yes you can you can manage your time quite well and especially like you said that's fantastic advice i think just put to put aside some time where you're just putting out fires and just mm-hmm. dealing with distractions mm-hmm. awesome advice i love it, it i works. absolutely love it <laughs> i absolutely love it awesome so caroline on for people who might be a little bit new to this or who are not sure how to get started what what does your calendar actually look like Okay, so um, usually between nine to five every day, um, I am working on something business related. Um, I also have, you know, a family to take care of. I have uh, other commitments. I have volunteer work, things like that. I have my personal time. And so um, my calendar, like I said, it's booked. There is always something scheduled, right. uh, even, if it's, even if it's sleep. It's scheduled. It's on my calendar. Wow. I schedule, I schedule my downtime. I schedule my sleep time. I schedule my meals. I schedule pretty much everything because Goodness. that is my roadmap. Yeah. And if I want downtime, I schedule the downtime or the downtime is not going to happen. Mm. So I make sure I prioritize what I want to do. I set my goals and then I schedule my calendar to, you know, it's not, it's not always perfect. Of course not. Um, things happen, but having, um, you know, not being overbooked or trying to not be overbooked every day. Uh, and that's where tracking my time is full circle back to what we talked about in the beginning. That's where tracking your time comes into play because you can see exactly what you're doing. If, even if I'm sleeping, I'm tracking my time and I'm saying, okay, you know what? I only got five hours or six hours of sleep. That's not good enough. I'm going to adjust that. What am I doing wrong? Why am I overbooking myself? What's happening here? And um, doing that really helps. I find that that's my, my calendar is my guide. <laughs> and I, I live by it. That's amazing. You even schedule your meals and your sleep. That's, that's, yeah. that's phenomenal. Otherwise, I don't get <laughs> enough of it. I have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but at the same time, I think it's so powerful as well because you have full control, right? You know exactly what's happening for how long, where you need to be at what time. It's phenomenal. Like you said, it's like a roadmap. Yeah, it's like a roadmap. Yeah, (laughs) phenomenal. Um, For some people though, like it it could be one extreme where there's, there are people who are, you know, they, they just don't know how to organize. They just have no concept of how to stay organized. They have no um, kind of tools. They just don't know where to get started. And they're just constantly putting out fires and their schedules is all over the place and they feel burnt out. And on the other end, you might have people where, who are super organized, super focused, but again, they, they, they find no time left to themselves to actually relax and chill out. So what's amazing is the fact that you obviously are scheduling everything but you're also scheduling your sleep, your meals, and your downtime. So you know you have downtime coming up, and you can just forget about everything else and just chill. Yeah, Yeah. and I find that if you can figure out a routine, that helps even more. Mm. So what you can do is start with a blank schedule. If you're a beginner, you can start with a blank schedule um, and just fill in your sleep. Make sure you get enough sleep. Otherwise, you can't function. Yeah. You know, Make sure you fill in your meals. And then you see, you know what, how much time do I have left over here? And what can I reasonably do? So often we overschedule ourselves. We take on too much. Something I always struggle with because I want to do so much. I'm so excited about it. But I have to sometimes step back and say, you know what? I'm doing too much here. What yeah. can I do? How can I how can I step back and and either let somebody else help me or you know how can I maybe reevaluate this goal or or is it really leading to something? Yeah. And so it's always a always a work in progress, right? It's never done. It's always a constant ev- evolution, I guess, yeah. of of how your life unfolds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you have to keep your finger on the pulse, right? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um Caroline, this has been absolutely tremendous. I love this conversation. I mean, it just went in so many different directions, all related, (laughs) all good, all great, and you dropped so much value on us. It's been phenomenal. There's lots of takeaways that I'll be taking away from this conversation as well. So it's absolutely amazing. Now, usually towards the end, I do like to do a quick rapid fire round, just two or three quick questions, if you're down for that. Okay. Sure. Awesome. So the first question is, if right now, 
you had to just step away from everything. What's the one thing you would miss the most? I would I would miss the relationships. I would miss connecting with people and helping people. That's that that means a lot to me when I see the impact that I have on people when I actually help them accomplish something. I that that sort of fuels me. I love that. I would miss that so much. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 feeling of you know, it's it's almost like getting high, really, because you get a rush of endorphins, um, and mm-hmm. and you feel really good when somebody comes to say, "Oh, thank you so much. You made a difference in my life. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it." Um, okay, next question. What do you think is the connection between mindset and success? I think that's everything. I, I like I said before, if you think you should be it, then just be it. If you if you want to be it, just be it. Uh, and then you are it, and then nobody can tell you any different. And I think having that mindset of saying I'm I'm trying to be something versus I am something that's a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. And my my final question, Caroline, you obviously are um, a, a really big force of positive influence in so many people's life. Who's the one person who has influenced you the most? Oh wow. Um, that's a that's a good question, and that would have to probably be a tie with some of my family members. Um, you know, I have uh, amazing parents who never once said uh, anything to limit me. You know, they always have been very supportive. Um, they've always believed in me, always trusted me, um, always uh, been there for me and helped me in any way they can. Same with my husband. Um, and uh, the rest of my family, they've just been amazing. And so it, it would have to be a tie between them, I think. <laughs> when, when you have a good support network, I mean, how can you not be successful? Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's all about, uh, you know, having good people in your life. You're the average of the five people you good spend people the most time you. with. Yeah, 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 absolutely. People who uplift you and drive you forward and motivate you, all those things. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. I love that answer. So to wrap up, Caroline, how can we help you right now? And how can people reach out to you? You can find me um, at the SwedishOrganizer.com. I'm on social media. And uh, if you Google um, Organizer Caroline, then you pr- I'll probably pop up somewhere. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I love to talk to people, meet new people. So uh, I love answering questions. If I can help somebody, that makes my day. So don't be, don't be scared to reach out. I'm here. Awesome. Yeah. And, and guys, I always encourage you guys to go and reach out to every single guest that we have on. How awesome would it be if all of you just sent an email or a message to Caroline right now and just said, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us because she did drop a tremendous amount of value on us. There are lots of takeaways that I'll be taking away, things like prioritizing your tasks, goal setting, make sure you set a goal and work backwards, things like how I can actually make sure I spend time planning things before I just rush into my day spend time on actually making sure I am organized, on making sure that I have a clarity on where I want to be, what do I want to achieve for my day, and then setting aside time to just put out fires, and setting aside time to deal with distractions. I think some really important takeaways from this conversation, and I'll be implementing them in my life. I think me and Caroline will both love to connect with you guys, but also love to know what are your big takeaways, what are your aha moments, and what strategies will you be implementing in your life? That's tremendous. The sun is coming out and it's about to blind me because the blinds are not quite set right on the window. Um, but yes, it's been a tremendous uh, it's been a tremendous experience to have you on, Caroline. Thank you so much for for being here with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been so much fun. Yes, it has been. It has been an absolute blast. So, guys, as always, I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Um, Go ahead, take action, reach out to Caroline. Let's start a conversation. Reach out to me if you think I can help you with anything. I'd love to connect with you. And as always, finally, I just want to say thanks again. And uh, make sure you hustle hard and stay awesome. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.